The Flames are on a bit of a break right now, but the management still have some big decisions to make. And while this season's playoff hopes look more bleak after each day, the future can still look extremely bright if the management do make the right decisions through this signing season with all of the Calgary Flames' prospects. Welcome to Flames Digest, I'm Mark Griffith. If you're new around here, you love the Flames, then make sure you subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the latest news, updates, reports, and rumors on the Calgary Flames, and you can join the fastest growing community of Flames fans on the internet. We would love to welcome you to the Flames Digest family. But like I said, the Flames, they don't play for a while. They don't play until Saturday when they're over in Vancouver. And signing season with some of the prospects has already started. We've seen the Flames. They've signed Bruce Stevich. They got Sam Morton out of the NCAA. But there is still a big decision to make with the rest of the Flames' as prospects. Now, the Flames, obviously, after all of the trades through the trade season, through the Tanev trade, the Hannafin trade, Lindholm, Zadorov, Toffoli, etc. The Flames have picked up a lot of younger assets and a lot of them are prospects. But you can't necessarily sign every single prospect and not every single prospect will stay with the organization. So we'll take a little look at an article written by Ryan Pike here and let's just jump straight in. So the Flames have signed two players this March already signing OHLer Hunter Brustevich and college free agent addition Sam Morton to deals. There could be more deals, but the Flames likely need to make determinations on the hockey futures of college blue liner Jake Boltman and Finnish defenseman Yoni Yermo as their rights both lapse this coming summer. That's the cold, hard reality of signing season. Teams can't sign everybody they've drafted or acquired, and this time of year forces decisions to be made. The Flames will not have everyone. And the Flames already have a lot of prospects that have gotten NHL games, like Coronado in the thumbnail, um, Pelche, Dustin Wolf has been up lately, and many others. And I would assume the Flames want to commit to those guys more than maybe some of the other guys who aren't fully signed and playing with the Wranglers right now. But let's just take a look at a few of them. Which prospects get a yes we will take a look at some of the bigger names, higher profile names, I guess you could say, when it comes to the Flames pipeline and the organization. And there were two names in what Ryan Pike wrote right there that actually we will start with. And it was Boltman and Yoni Yermo. So let's start with Jake Boltman. He is a defenseman out of the University of Notre Dame. He's part of the Fighting Irish. That's perfect. Perfect this time of year, right around St. Patrick's Day just passed. Boltman's NCAA season and college career are now complete. So his season this year, obviously he is not a scoring guy at all. You look at that, the past couple seasons, he has one goal and he has, what, seven points total there. Not a scoring guy. However, he's still a very good prospect. So he was the Flames' third round pick um, back in the 2020 NHL draft. An NHL draft that has gone very under the radar just because of um, COVID and the pandemic kind of stunted that season a bit and the next season. And we didn't fully get to see what these players were capable of in junior, but Boltman has shown what he can do at the NCAA level. And I think he gets a yes, he should be signed. I know the Flames have a ton of defensemen in the pipeline right now. I mean, even ones that could be in the lineup any day now kind of thing, but I think he is a good young guy that the Flames could commit to in the future. For sure, compared to some of the other defensemen in the pipeline as well. I mean, you can go and look at who the Flames have as their defensive prospects. I'm not going to show all of them in this video or else this would be a, at least an hour long video for sure. I'm just going to focus on a few guys here. But for me, Boltman gets a yes and could be signed and should be playing with the Wranglers at some point, hopefully next season. Now the other guy, Yoni Yermo. Now he came over in the Elias Lindholm trade to Vancouver. So he was Vancouver's third round pick um, back in the 2020 NHL draft, similar to Boltman, just two picks later. Um, his Liga season has concluded. So another guy similar to Boltman, another bigger D-man, Yermo has been said to be a pretty smooth skater and can chip in offensively, but you look at the stats and once again, not the most overwhelming offensive stats by any means. And he is a little bit, I don't know, there's there's something about him that doesn't scream future NHLer to me. And look, I'm no scout. 
I have never witnessed this guy play a full game. I've watched Yoni Irmo's highlights, but they're highlights, right? Of course, he's going to look good in the highlights. I didn't watch a Yoni Yermo low light compilation before I recorded this video. But for me, if you have to choose between those two, Boltman and Yermo, I'm actually going to swing the Boltman way and maybe Yoni Yermo gets a no. With all of the other defensemen that the Flames have acquired through the trade season and have previously drafted before this trade season, he just in no way stands out to me and I don't see him ever reaching the NHL level maybe even let alone for the Wranglers. So to me, Yoni Irmo might be a bit of a no on this one. Now let's continue here. Who is next up? We'll go with Etienne Morin, another defenseman. This guy plays for Moncton in the queue. He was Calgary's second round pick in the 2022 NHL draft. So he is extremely young. He's only 18 years old and he is the fifth ranked prospect in the Flames' pipeline. And he is a baller. When it comes to producing offensively, this guy can do it. Look at his season today. 46 points in 55 games for a defenseman is sensational. He's put up double-digit goals in back-to-back -back years. Morin had a goal and an assist over four games this past week, and Moncton has three games remaining in their regular season. Then it's playoff time. So his junior season isn't even over yet. He can still show what he can do. I mean, the Flames have picked up some offensive defensemen like Hunter Brustevich and others. But Etienne Morin, keep him in the pipeline for sure. He gets a resounding yes from me. He should absolutely get signed, whether it's this season or in the future. Definitely sign him up. He is the kind of prospect that I think a lot of Flames fans want. Um, the Flames are kind of struggling to score a little bit. And it's always nice to know that you can have a guy who can come play and play produce offensively if Shillington doesn't sign with the Flames and the Flames will definitely want more of an offensive guy I would assume Bruce Stevich is the guy who would come in but Moray is a great option as well as are others but Moray definitely gets a yes from me next on the list Samuel Honsik of the Vancouver Giants over in the WHL he's 19 he was our first round pick in last year's draft he's our fourth ranked prospect I mean just by reading that obviously he gets a yes but he has been very very good um he has missed a couple games um to take an exam as of late but in the three games since he has three points and he is so good look at that whl season today 30 points in 31 games pretty much a point per game you look at his world junior um production over the world junior championship over the winter break he had uh, four points in five games with three of them being goals. This guy knows how to score. He had 23 goals last season in just 43 games. Obviously, he gets a yes from me. It's great to have a scorer in the system. And he's really showing right now with the Vancouver Giants what he can do. I mean, I actually have watched quite a few of his highlights. I Again, I haven't watched a full Vancouver Giants game anytime recently. Probably since the last time I saw a Hitman game live. But... He is the real deal. He can score. He can do it all. He was a great pick back in the draft. And I really want the Flames to commit to him long term. He is sensational and should be gifted the chance to remain with the organization. And potentially become a very, very good player here. I mean, I know the Flames want to commit more to Peltier, Coronado, guys like that. But Hanzik is another very good scorer that could definitely see NHL minutes in the near future. That is just how skilled he is and how much he produces. Next up, let's look at Sam Morton. So he was just recently signed. Um, he is the stud out of Minnesota State University. And believe it or not, today he was actually named a Hobie Baker finalist. Now, we went over his stats yesterday, and they're very good. The guy can score. It's great that the Flames signed him. He made his Wranglers debut on Tuesday night, and he got the primary assist. So he already has one point in one game for the Wranglers. He is just, honestly, he is very, very good. I don't think he'll win the Hobie Baker with guys like uh, first overall pick in this year's draft, Macklin Celebrini and Will Smith as well, the Sharks prospect. He won't win the Hobie Baker, but he is incredible. Obviously, he gets a yes. He's already been signed. The Flames should commit to him long term, and he could jump into the Flames lineup at any point. I believe that is how good he is, and that is how much he can produce. I am a Sam Morton fan for sure. Now, 
Let's look at the next one. Cole Schwint, he's come up and played at the NHL level a couple times. Um, he was another third round pick, but this was way back in 2019. So he's 22 years old now. Um, but he, you know what? He has shown that he's pretty good at the NHL level. Um, he scored quite a bit this year in the A. He's done well with the Wranglers. I like him. Maybe still not quite as good as what a lot of Flames fans thought he would be, including myself, but I still give him a yes. He gets a yes for sure. He's another forward who can score. He hasn't fully shown his potential yet, and I want him to have more room to grow, but he's been great for the Wranglers. He's been pretty good when he's come up to the Flames, so keep him in the organization, absolutely. Now, one last one, or one last group we'll look at here. These are the rest. So these are the ones that I didn't list and didn't want to go over completely, but they all get yeses from me. So Coronado, Pelche, easy yes from me. Obviously, we've already committed to them. They're great. Dustin Wolf, yes, of course, he belongs in a Flames uniform. Now, Jeremy Poirier, another one who he can step up offensively and should get a yes. And then Arseny Sergeyev, he is a goalie who was playing in the NCAA this year. Very good save percentage. If the Flames do move on from Markstrom this offseason or Vladar, um, then they do need goalies in the pipeline, and I think he can be a very, very good one. So those guys all get yeses from me as well. I like the Flames' prospects right now, and they will draft so many more in the near future, which is just great. Now, the last thing we'll look at in this video is the unfortunate news about Chris Simon. If you haven't heard by now, he did unfortunately pass away in his home. Um, the product of Wawa Ontario was sensational for the Flames, became a fan favorite throughout the 04 Cup run. He scored a bunch of goals through that playoff run. I believe he had five in 16 games, but Chris Simon has passed away. So we are sending all of our love and prayers to his family and friends and all of his loved ones. Rest in peace to Chris Simon. That does it for this video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you're new around here and have a tremendous rest of your day.